Hello, welcome from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee. I'm Mark Brown. Our reading today is a long one and uh, probably unfamiliar from Judges chapter 17. Now a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, the 1100 shekels of silver that were taken from you about which I heard you utter a curse, I have that silver with me. I took it. Then his mother said, the Lord bless you, my son. When he returned the 1100 shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver. I will give it back to you. So after he returned the silver to his mother, she took 200 shekels of the silver and gave it to the, them to a smilder, silversmith who used them to make the idol and it was put in Micah's house. Now this man Micah had a shrine and he made an ephod and some household gods and installed one of his sons as his priest. In those days, there had, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. A young Levite from Bethlehem in Judea who had been living within the clan of Judah left that town in search of some other place to stay. On his way, he came to Micah's house in the hill country of Ephraim. Micah asked him, where are you from? I'm a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, he said, and I'm looking for a place to stay. Then Micah said to him, live with me and be my father and priest, and I'll give you 10 shekels of silver a year, your clothes and your food. So the Levite agreed to live with him and the young man became like one of his sons to him. Then Micah installed the Levite and the young man became his priest and lived in his house. And Micah said, now I know that the Lord will be good to me since this Levi bite has become my priest. I'll bet you never heard that story in church before. In fact, this is one of the later stories in the book of Judges. Um, and the book of Judges very seldom would say about any of the stories, go and do thou likewise. And maybe you heard in the middle of the story that line that says, Israel had no king in those days. Everyone did as he saw fit, which is an ominous, repeated statement in the book. Now, there are a lot of things that we would just wonder about in here. The fact that uh, this son would steal money from his mother and she blesses him when he admits it and she's go he's going to make an, an ephod, which is, a, a, well, it's, it's like a, a vest in a way, but it's also overlaid with precious metal and it was used by the priest. And he essentially sets up his own little worship spot in his house and then he gets somebody who comes along who says, work for me, be in my house. I'll treat you like my son. You can be my priest. And there's especially the line at the end where he said again, now I know that the Lord will be good to me since I have this Levite who's become a priest in my house. Let me suggest one reason why we should be sympathetic to him and why we might find ourselves tempted to be more like him than we realize. People are tempted to want to have some guarantee that God will take care of them the way they want him to. Um, it may be belonging to the right group. It may be having something in your history, your family name that puts you in the right place. Uh, it, it, it might be something as obvious like this as having some item in your house that is religious that you count on and you say, this will keep me safe. Nothing bad can happen to me. Well, God does not promise us that he will always flood our lives with things that we want and that we will enjoy. He does promise God that he will work all things for good for those who love him. But sometimes that is not immediately obvious. And so when difficulty or tragedy comes to our lives, we may wonder, well, aren't I doing the right thing? Don't I have the right stuff in my house? How could he do this to me? The much better solution is to remember that God has been good to us through his son, Jesus. In Jesus, he has given us forgiveness of our sins, the promise to be with us, and the promise there lies the promise that through Jesus, he will work all things for our good. We cannot manipulate God to make him treat us in the way that we want him to treat us. We can count on his grace that he will give us all we need 
that he will see us through the difficult times in our lives and that ultimately he will use us to be blessings to others. So today, I hope in this lesson, we learn a good example, even if it's what not to do, the way a man named Micah did. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have no absolute claim on your mercy. We cannot find something or do something to manipulate you to get what we want, and we don't need to, because in your Son you have given us all we need, the assurance that we belong to you, and we pray that you will help us always look to that for our assurance, rather than what our background is or what we've done or who we belong to. We belong only to you, Lord Jesus, and your Father. And we ask you to keep us in that certainty every day of our lives and into eternity. In your name, amen.